and in today's Udots integrations we are going to show you how to handle downlink messages to your Sigfox devices from Ubidots. So now, let's get started. The requirements for today's videos are a Ubidots account with UbiFunction feature already enabled, a Sigfox backend account, and any Sigfox device with downlink support. For a better understanding of how downlink messages work with Ubidots, let's suppose that you want to be able to modify the update frequency of a device by adjusting a variable in my Ubidots dashboard. But how can you do this? Let's first check the process that your Sigfox device uses to receive a downlink message. First, the device has to request a new update frequency value. To do this, the Sigfox device will first trigger an oblique message containing a downlink flag to the Sigfox backend. Then, the request of the downlink message will be direct to Ubidot's data transformation tool, called UbiFunctions. With this tool, you will be able to create your own Sigfox-specific API endpoint that will receive and send a downlink messages both to and from Sigfox bidirectionally. At this point, once data hits the UbiFunction endpoint, the last value assigned in the dashboard will be converted into a hexadecimal format required for the Sigfox backend and send the downlink data to the Sigfox backend using the correct data payload structure required by Sigfox. Uyots and Sigfox will be able to identify exactly which device to update using the unique ID of the Sigfox hardware which first sent the request of the downlink message. By using the device ID of Sigfox, we can be assured that the right Sigfox hardware will receive the downlink message. Remember that to be able to handle downlink messages, you need to configure your device in order to request to it. For this, I recommend you refer to the device provider documentation provided in the description below to find additional details on how to set this up. Now, let's check the step-by-step -step of what is required to achieve a successful downlink between Sigfox and Ubidots. Our review today will include four steps. As always, you can find the timestamp and a written guide in the description below. The WeFunction engine is going to be in charge of retrieving the downlink frequency value assigned by the user from the Ubidots dashboard and to return the downlink data structure to Sigfox backend containing the required update for frequency value. To get tip on the functionality of the UbiFunction engine, you can quickly refer to the UbiFunction user guide in the description below. To create an UbiFunctions, go to your Ubidots account and press Management, then Functions. If you cannot see the Functions model in your Ubidots account, you will need to enable it in the Building section of your account. Now, click the plus icon located in the upper right corner to create a new function. As you can see, by default, the Ubi function is populated with a sample code. This sample code will be replaced with the Ubi function code provided in the reading guide found in the description below. To start configuring your Ubi function, first you need to assign the name of your preference. For this, I'm going to assign Sigfox Downlink. Then assign get as HTTP method. To finish, note yes 8 as runtime. Now, with the code and the right configurations, you need to deploy the Ubi function. To deploy it, just click make it live. Once the Ubi function is deployed, it will generate an API endpoint URL which need to be assigned later in the Sigfox callable configuration. For now, let's just copy it. At this point, the sample code provided is designed to retrieve the last value assigned as update frequency value. Then, the function will return the spec data by Sigfox which contains the new update frequency value plus the Sigfox device ID 
to know which device is going to be updating its update frequency. The function, when triggered, will send the downlink message back to the Sigfox backend to be utilized at the device. The management of the data between Sigfox and Ubidot requires a callback. Sigfox callbacks use HTTP requests to transmit data bidirectionally with Ubidots. In this case, we are going to show you how to configure the Sigfox callback to transmit data from Ubidots to Sigfox devices using the Ubi functions engine previously configured. To begin, access to the Sigfox backend where your hardware is transmitting data. Then, just go to the device section and select the device type of the desired downlink device. Edit the device type by pressing the edit button located in the right upper corner of the page. Then select downlink mode as callback. To save the changes, just press OK. Now select callbacks from the menu on the left hand side of the page. To create the callback, select new. Then select custom callback. To be able to establish the communication with Ubidots, you need to assign the type of the callback, which is going to be bidirectionally. Then just leave channel as URL and assign in the URL pattern the URL generated in the Ubi function engine. At this point, you also need to include as parameters the token device and variable. For this, just assign a question mark and token equal the token of your Ubidots account. Then assign the device. At this point, you just need to write the word device inside the brackets. Because the Sigfox backend is in charge of assigning automatically the device ID of the device, which is triggering the downlink message. To finish, just include the variable with the variable desired to be created in your Ubidots account, which is going to be the one who is going to handle your downlink messages. In my case, the variable is going to be update frequency. Once you have verified the callback, press OK to save the changes. By default, the bidirectional callback will be inactive after creation. Be sure to activate it by selecting the downlink checkbox. With the Ubi function and Sigfox callback configured, you will be able to manage downlink messages from Ubidot to your Sigfox device once the Sigfox device sends a valid oblique message containing the downlink flag. Now, for testing purposes, we decide to use a Thintra XKit previously configured to request a downlink once the embed button of the board is pressed. As you can see, the serial monitor shows the logs of the device once the device is requesting the downlink message. First, it prints the reading of the embed sensor of the board. Then, it will send the uplink message. At this point, if you go to the message section of your Sigfox backend, you will be able to see how the oblique message was successfully received by identifying the green icons. As you can see, both icons was in green, which means that your data was successfully received into your device. Now, if you go to your Ubidots account and refresh the page, you will be able to see how a new device is created with the Sigfox device ID related to the device and containing a variable called update frequency with a default value of 10, which was the one received in your Sigfox device. Now, with the device and variable already in Ubidots, we need to create the control widget to be able to set the desired value to be sent to the Sigfox device. To create the widget, just press the plus icon, then select control, 
slider and the variable decided, which in my case is update frequency. Assign the maximum and minimum value desired and press finish. Now, with the widget created, let's assign a new value to the variable. Now, it's time to request the downlink message from the device configure. At this point, as you can see after requesting the downlink message, you will be able to receive the value assigned in the widget variable into your Sigfox device after a couple of seconds. Now you know how to send a Sigfox downlink message using Ubidots and the available developer tools at your disposal. A round of applause because this is very hard and you just succeeded where so many before you already failed. I hope this video tutorial provides you a better understanding of how to handle downlink messages to your Sigfox devices from third-party services like Ubidots. If you like this video, press like and don't forget to subscribe to Widot's channel to get updates as they come. See you soon.